Hello plant friends, hope you guys are doing well and staying amazing out there. So we are continuing our tour of Kabu's amazing greenhouse. She's on Instagram at mod underscore botanical. Give her a follow, give me a follow, follow people. But you know, if you're a kid, don't follow strangers and don't do drugs. Oh yes, Escalito or something? Yeah, Escalito, or es yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the one that's formerly known as the Epipanoides. Yes. Right, right. So a lot of people have questions about, about this plant and like identification. Two things that I look for is that there's like uh, these small fenestrations along the rib and, uh -huh. then, and then you have these larger fenestrations. You have basically two sets. Oh yeah? Alright, so that's... As the, opposed to... As opposed to like sometimes you, you kind of see only one set of fenestrations. You don't have these like smaller ones along the midrib. So there's always a series of small fenestrations along the bid rib and then you get larger ones. And then the other thing is that you kind of see this like a uh, winged petioles, I think they're called. Okay. Like down here and then it's like winged and then usually there's like a space around here. But um, that's always what I've told people to, to kind of look Different for. Different shade of I like your variegated Addisonii collection. I have found them very easy to care they for. They are very aggressive growers. Yeah, yeah. But the only problem that I do notice is the more you propagate them, the more white. Oh, really? Yeah. And then you lose them. So you still have to be very cautious mm -hmm. in over propagating them, it seems. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, oh, I like, uh, yeah, you have a very chunky mix. I have mine, I think I have mine in almost straight perlite. Yeah. Either, either straight perlite or like 5 10% soil or something. Variegated black cardinal. I'm impressed. I'm impressed. A lot of these, a lot of these plants are very, very hard to like find. Oh, what are these? This is uh, the variegated pedatum. Pedatum. Propagated. It's the mom, the mom plant are these. It's starting to be full moons. Uh huh. But um, but those actually gave me really nice variegation. These are going to be sold soon. <laughs> so how do you differentiate a variegated pedatum versus a uh, a Florida beauty? Um, I feel, oh, the Florida Beauty, if you look, the, the stem is red. Ah, yeah, there you go. Yeah, um, right. Right. Um, like, yeah. As opposed to green. Ah, yeah. Woo! That's a pretty Woo! one, huh? Oh! God, I love this plant. Yeah, I think I told you. It's I, a I staple, like, I, yeah. I love this plant so much. I, I feel like elbows and knees would just be here forever. Right, right. I feel like this should be a staple though. I I hope it is. Yeah, I, I agree. I had one of these, the uh -huh. Mirabilis or uh -huh. something like that, and I killed it. I was not... I found these really hard. Do they, do they like humidity? If they do, that would explain why mine died. <laughs> <laughs> they're so pretty though, huh? Yeah, they're really, really, really Almost pretty. prehistoric looking. Have you seen, uh, have you seen Kunzo? Kunzo has one that's, this is like, like two feet. There, his leaf is like two feet, two no. feet long. Yeah. It's this huge monster, and I didn't even know that it could, it get, could that get, get that big. Yeah. Oh, that's a propagating Milano. And then this one, is this an obliqua? Uh, Bolivian. Bolivian form. I don't know. I can't get into this guy. Not that one, you know. I like the other one. The Peruvian form, yeah. Yeah. yeah I just, it feels really bad for me to say, but I feel like... People are just into this one because there's so, an obliqua in yeah. the name. I wonder if they ever reclassify the Monsteras and took the obliqua out of this one's name. I feel like the prices would just like plummet. <laughs> I agree. Uh, Jose Bueno? Jose, mm-hmm. Whoa, look, I'm just like looking at your... That's a midrian over there, that's the mall. The thing's huge. Yeah. Holy cow. Wow, 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 wow. And then the standard on the elbow right over there. And then we have another Splendid and the Sauteri. Oh, wait, wait, let me see. You have a, is this like a, another Tortum? Oh, yes, that's a narrow form Tortum also, a larger yeah. one. Wow, wow. All right, I think if you told me this was a unique Syngonium Aria, I would believe you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, the yellow really, really stands out in all the leaves here. Yeah, that's a that's a good mother plant. Ooh, very, very cool. I like another Nanji. 
Not I'm... Nard, not Nanjin. Yeah, the, okay. <laughs> oh, oh wait, look. Oh, the Nanji? The Nanji. There's some variegation on that. Well, I like the, I like the stem on this, na think, this yeah. little, this little uh, fuzzy. white fuzzy sort of things. Let me see this one. Let me see if I can turn it. Here's this one. It's a bigger one. I always have multiples. A Nanji? Yeah. yeah, but it's, uh, the full name is Nanji. I like this part. Whatever. The right? cute little the, furry the part. It's not, I wouldn't even call it furry. It's just like textured. Yeah. You, you felt it? Oh. Oh my yeah, God. This like is... <laughs> I like it because the leaf is actually really cute. It's like a heart shape. Oh, okay. It's very like a little plump yeah. heart. Oh, okay. I, I thought that the special thing was this little thing Probably in the back. Is. That's it. You know, we all, we're you all could looking, like it for that. Yeah, we're all <laughs> looking for like different, like it for different things, right? That's really cool. Yeah. Your elbow is very, very nice. Thank you. It actually was sitting indoors for a while, a long time, actually. I just brought it out when I built this. Do you propagate from it, or is this kind of like a personal thing that you just kind of keep? Um, I have propagated from it. The way I propagate is, so I have, um, because they're all fully, I have all the roots going onto the moss pole and going down, so they're all independently rooted the nodes oh. and what I do is I chop it while it's still in the pot so this is another one that's growing right now hmm. and if I do want to separate it then I can separate it later and uproot everything and then it's already a full independent plant but um, I propagated like three of the bottom notes already and that's like the fourth one but this is definitely going to be my mother plant, my staple super super impressive it has really pretty um, variegation it's such a good balance. Like green with little white and then more black and white. Yeah, you have plenty of green for the energy and then plenty of white to enjoy. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, I don't think you have to worry about balance like it becomes too green or too white. It looks like it's very, yeah, nice. Easy plant. And your begonia macalata, is that right? Oh uh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> I am so happy I can recognize at least one begonia. <laughs> the most common form, I think, but the most common, like, it's the, the, the hottest. The most common, like, right? popular one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm like, yes, I can, I can do it. And uh, variegated banana? Yes, and that's the Florida. Uh, there's a different types of variegated bananas? Uh, yes, there is the Musa Ai, Ai, I believe, and that's the um, oh. one for overseas. And they say it's a little harder to take care of. I just got this one from a gentleman in the Bay Area recently. I like it. It's pretty. Yeah. This one actually doesn't have a, a lot of white variegation on it, but I like it because it's a survival rate is better. Uh, <laughs> is it, would you ever, can people grow a, something like this indoors? Yes. Oh yeah. A okay. lot of people grow it indoor. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I like it. Oh, it's windy oh. today, huh? Oh. Is this an uh, Atta something? Atta Botanese or something? Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah. This is another Aria, right? Mm -hmm. That is the mother of the of this one. Whoa. Not this one. Oh. The variegation is different, huh? Yeah. This you have, one you have much less variegation on this mother plant. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah, let, me, let me show the... The, the baby, yeah, the baby has a lot more, nice. Mm -hmm. You have a lot of the, the aria, the yellows, the creams. Resonates with me a lot. <laughs> <laughs> what is this one? Dissecta. Ah. Yeah. And it's not very popular either too, but it's actually a really pretty, this is like the mature version, the mature leaf. And it gets bigger oh. than this. It's really pretty. Oh, yeah. Very cool. Um, how's your, uh, I'm going to see how your orbifolia is doing. Okay. Crispy. Struggles. Crispy. <laughs> yeah. I don't do Calatheas, but I was like, I really want a big one. Okay. So I want to tell people that, again, this is in your greenhouse. That's like 90 to hundred percent humidity pretty much all the time. Mm -hmm. Good warmth and gets misted with your automatic misters. 
And dries. Several, yeah. several times a day, right. And you still get these crispiness. I really, really think the crispiness is due to the water. Because mm -hmm. uh, you see a lot of European collectors on YouTube, like they have these giant orbifolias and it's pristine, right? Yes. And I'm like, there's no way, there's no way their conditions are are that much different from Mars. I think it's the water. I think like the hard water. Oh, you think so? Yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely. I do have hard water in here. Yeah. I'm a tap water user. Yeah. So I don't, you know, I don't really advocate or do that kind of extra work for the water, but I think for orbifolias, water. I think it's the water. 